Hi, this is Gary Coverly. I hope you're enjoying the weekend. Wake up with a Sunday morning. I'll take you inside the hallowed but troubled halls of Dunn, Scotus, and Southfield and explain how an attempt to preserve its history is not answering the friar's prayers. Plus, kids raising kids. Teenage moms receive most of the attention. But what about teenage dads who are trying to do the right thing? Jim Tooman will have more solutions to problems you may be facing, and Melvin Epps will have a solution to our weather questions all Sunday at 8 on Eyewitness Weekend. Join us. It's fun, it's dirty, and it takes two. Now's your chance to join WJBK TV2 and WLLZ as we get down and dirty during the 4th Annual TV2 Mud Volleyball Tournament Saturday, August 15th. We're looking for co-ed teams of eight, and all players must be 18 or older. Your registration fee includes round-trip boat transportation from Amherstburg and unlimited use of Boblo's rides and attractions. Tournament winners get round-trip airfare on American Airlines anywhere within the contiguous U.S. Call 552-5176 and sign up your team today. Breaking news, latest sports. Now they're both at your fingertips from TV2 Eyewitness News. Just dial 252-2200, then 2222 toll-free. To be informed, it takes two. Weekdays this fall, Donahue's back on TV2. Good morning. It's Sunday, August 9th. I'm Gary Coverly. Welcome to Eyewitness Weekend right now. What is the temperature? Just yell it out. 62. Just 62 degrees outside at 8 a.m. Good Sunday morning to you. By the way, uh, today is Sunday, August 9th, the 222nd day of 1992, and there are 144 days left in the year. I'll have something else for you, too. Oh, by the way, also in history, 150 years ago, on August 9, 1842, a border dispute between the United States and Canada was resolved with the signing of the Webster-Ashburton Treaty. I just thought our Canadian neighbors would like to know that. Also in the papers this morning, if you haven't seen the New York Times, I heartily recommend one article. It's entitled, North American Trade Talks, Focus on Parts for Vehicles. The free, tra uh, free trade talks among the United States, Canada, and Mexico dragged on today as negotiators continued to sort through and resolve the many technical details of a North American free trade agreement, since we are... Uh, so dependent on the auto industry here, I think you might find that fascinating. Also in the New York Times, apology from naval aviators. Remember this story? Well, the uh, Tailhook Association has offered its first public apology to more than 25 women who said they were sexually assaulted at the group's 1991 convention in Las Vegas. Now, one other quick thing before we get to the weather. This is in the uh, magazine section, the Detroit Free Press magazine in this morning's paper. I love this. This is under News of the Weird. In May, the Missouri Court of Appeals turned down David Turner's appeal of the automatic suspension of his driver's license for refusing to take a blood alcohol test. Now, his argument to the court was that, when arrested, he was too drunk to realize that he should have submitted to the test. I like that. Hmm. Well, you know, it is Sunday, and, you know, there are probably one or two kids out there that partied a little too hardy last night. So I thought they might appreciate that. Hmm. Perhaps well, so. Perhaps. Now, what, what's on the agenda weather-wise? Oh, well, we can tell you that we have some warmer temperatures in store. Okay. That's right. We may be flirting with the 90-degree temperature mark today? on Monday. Oh, on Monday. 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 Now, Monday. for today, we're talking about a high of about 86. Let's take a look at it right now. Outside 64 over at Metro Airport, 62 at our studios here in Southfield. The wind out of the southwest at 9, the relative humidity at 90%. And the barometric pressure is rising. Here's your forecast, and it's a beauty. Or rather, the satellite picture, it kind of shows you what today's going to be like. like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could call you it that. that yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get a breakup in that cloudiness. <laughs> now covers the lower peninsula. And what we're going to see are, is uh, a partially sunny day, partly cloudy, fine Sunday nonetheless, high temperature of around 86 degrees. I think people would be amazed if they knew how many computers were involved oh, yeah. in delivering the weather. Are you getting them down? This is only our fourth day now. <laughs> uh, are they all working for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's working fine. So. Terrific. Thank you, Melvin. Melvin will be back a little bit later on in the uh, broadcast with a complete look at the weather. Thanks a lot, my friend. Let's take a look at some of the stories making news now on TV2's Eyewitness Weekend. It's been less than a week since U.S. troops started joint military exercises in Kuwait. But already two soldiers are dead. The U.S. Navy says two Marines were killed today when their Cobra helicopter went down during war games near the Kuwaiti-Iraqi border. Troops began exercises on Monday, just two years after Iraqi forces first occupied Kuwait. The Navy says they don't know how the crash happened, and there's no information yet about the identity of the victims. 
The phrase contract extension is ringing a bell today for 12,000 workers at the phone company. Michigan Bell employees are on the job today as negotiators try to work out a collective bargaining agreement. Talks will resume this morning and the phone workers union has agreed not to strike while those talks go on. They had threatened to strike at midnight. Talks are going a little better at two of the other baby bells. Workers at Southwestern Bell and Bell South have new contract agreements today after negotiators came to terms overnight. Right now, talks are continuing at Bell Atlantic and Pacific Telesis. A 15-year-old boy from Utica is dead today after trying to get high by inhaling aerosol fumes. The teenager and two friends had been breathing the fumes for several of several cans of air freshener at the time. TV2's John Hewitt says the boy was found in the basement of his home. This is what police say Jeremy Fellowsack and his friends were using. Three cans of Glade Potpourri air freshener. By the time Jeremy collapsed, one can was empty and they had already started on the other two. The boys were apparently getting a high from breathing in the spray. Officer Jerry Carroll was among the first on the scene shortly after 11 o'clock this morning. They had put a towel over the can and they were spraying the can through the towel and they would inhale the air that came out through the towel. And they said they did that for approximately 10 to 20 minutes and uh, Jeremy collapsed in the basement. That's when they called the EMS, called us. It was unfortunately too late. Jeremy had no pulse by the time emergency personnel arrived to his home. He was pronounced dead 30 minutes later at Beaumont Hospital. Tonight, Jeremy's family declined any comments, obviously trying to come to grips with a tragedy that is a shock to everyone. I've talked to other officers about it since this has happened, and most of them, you know, it's the first time they've ever heard about it. And I've, for one, I've, this is the first time I've ever came into any contact with anything like this. John Hewitt, TV2 Eyewitness News Weekend. Sad. So far, the autopsy results have not given police any new information before the Macomb County Medical Examiner can issue the exact cause of death. They are waiting for the results of blood and toxicology tests. According to police, there will be no criminal charges filed unless it's found that the boy's friends had forced him to inhale the air freshener fumes. At this point, police say there's no indication of that having occurred. And one man is dead after allegedly starting a shootout at a topless bar in Detroit. Five other people were hurt in the shootout early Saturday morning at the Black Orchid Lounge. One patron fired a gun at two other customers who happened to be off-duty Wayne County Sheriff's deputies. The shootout that followed caused dozens of patrons to scatter from the bar. The man, who police say started the incident, was killed by the off-duty officers. For many of us, trolls, those of us who live below the bridge, as the Youpers would say, the Upper Peninsula offers a wonderful escape from Michigan's long, hot, humid summers. However, this year, we haven't had a long, hot summer. In fact, we've hardly had any summer at all, which appears to be confusing Mother Nature north of the Lower Peninsula. Leaves have already started to turn color in parts of the UP. Some believe this is an indication of an early fall, but according to some experts, the early debut of yellow and red leaves does not mean peak colors will come out any sooner. They still predict the end of September will be the prime viewing time. How does someone become a leaf expert? Well, I'm not sure. It's time to dig out those Michigan lottery tickets to see how you did in last night's drawing. Good luck to you. The numbers for last night's daily picks were 8, 2, 8, and 1, 4, 3, 0. And the Lotto 47 numbers were 3, 4, 7, 35, 45, and 47. The Lottery Bureau says no ticket holder matched all six winning numbers in Saturday night's drawing. 44 tickets matched five numbers. Those ticket holders win $2,500 each. And $100 prizes are being set aside for the 2,200 or so ticket holders who matched four numbers. Well, right now it's 64 degrees. The time is seven minutes past eight o'clock. And uh, as TV2's Eyewitness Weekend returns, our senior reporter gets down to some tunes that she says are making a comeback. And a little later, a plan to save an historic building in Metro Detroit is not an answer to some prayers. We'll take you inside Dunn Scotus Friary today on Eyewitness Weekend. Why should you do business with Detroit businesses? Because when you do, you keep our economy running. You're opening doors for new businesses. That means you're creating jobs, improving our schools, and building better roads. When you invest in the future, it means a bigger piece of the pie for all of us. WJVK TV2 and Corporate Detroit Magazine thank you, Detroit Business, for supporting this campaign.
the heart of Detroit's new center area is the city's most famous Italian restaurant, Lely's on Woodward Avenue. Enjoy delicious homemade pasta specialties, prime steak and chops, superb veal creations, as well as Lely's famous filet mignon. Lely's also has banquet facilities that accommodate requests from 20 to 200. For parties, business meetings, bar mitzvahs, reunions, or any event that deserves the very best, call 871-1590. Lely's, Detroit's most famous Italian restaurant, in the new center area on Woodward Avenue, just north of Grand Boulevard. Surrender to the music of the night. The power of the music. Cadillac of presents the Michael night. Crawford and the music of Andrew Lloyd Webber, September 15th through 20th at the Fox Theater. Right for the a spectacular theatrical concert. The music of Andrew Lloyd Webber with special guest star Michael Crawford. Tickets now to box office, Ticketmaster, or charge by phone. All opening night tickets, $5 off. Compliments of WTBK TV2. Presented by Cadillac. Yes, you can make money on your mortgage. It's all in how you pay it. I'm business editor Murray Feldman with a TV2 tip on mortgages. See if your lender will allow you to pay half the monthly payment every other week. It's commonly called a bi-weekly loan. Terms are usually the same as a traditional 30-year loan, but you're paying it off sooner. A typical 30-year loan will be paid off in 22 years. On a $100,000 mortgage, you may be able to save $60,000, and that could come in handy when the kids are ready for college. Good morning. Welcome back. Gary Coverly with you on this Sunday morning, August the 9th at 10 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. You can find country music in more and more stereos and Walkman these days, but big band music is also on the rise. And our senior reporter, Doris Winkler, says as far as she's concerned, big band beats rock and roll any day of the week, including Sunday. Well, it's that time of year again. Time for the big band bash and the senior dance contest held just where you would expect Roseland. They're in their 50s, 60s, and even older. The music is the new Jimmy Dorsey band, and the vocals are provided by big band star Helen O'Connell. I think uh, it's become more popular than ever, and I've seen it growing even before I started doing this. There's a saying that the legs are the last part of the body to get old, but these dancers make the whole shebang look good. The big winners were Monty and Nora Howell. <laughs> I think it keeps us young. We met 40 years ago. Oh. Pretty good for 63 and 67, wouldn't you say? I'm Doris Winkler with the Senior Report. And I've been a musician for a lot of years and uh, play every kind of music there is, including rock and roll, but I love big band, too. we got some great big bands right here in the Detroit area. Doris Winkler's Senior Report can also be seen weekdays on TV2, first news at 4. It's 64 degrees in the time right now, 12 minutes past 8 o'clock. Coming up next on TV2's Eyewitness Weekend, Melvin Epps will have today's forecast. And we'll go to Beverly Hills, that is, for a great eating Sunday brunch. And TV2's Fred Human will introduce us to an incredible athlete and bring us up to date on the world of sports. Now, the continuing saga of the Superior family in their search for the perfect family vehicle. Today, the Superior's comparison shop. The Superiors are comparing the Signature Series Town Car to the Buick Roadmaster Limited sedan. Both cars are premium American-built six-passenger luxury sedans. Both have standard features like ABS brakes, driver's side airbags, V8 power, and numerous other options standard. After comparing, the only difference the Superiors can find is the Buick Roadmaster is priced $10,000 less than the town car. Joy overcomes the Superiors as they try to decide what to do with their newfound fortune. With the money they save, Junior could get this new GMC pickup. Dad could, uh... Dad, uh, Dad, snap out of it. So, <clears throat> if your family is just like the Superiors, or close to, visit a Superior Buick and test drive the 1992 Buick Roadmaster and enjoy the same luxury of a town car and have $10,000 in extra cash. Tune in next time when Mother Superior and Junior find common ground to communicate. Visit Superior Buick on Michigan Avenue, just a half mile east of the Southfield Freeway in Dearborn. Breaking news, latest sports. Now they're both at your fingertips from TV2 Eyewitness News. Just dial 252-2200, then 2222 toll free. To be informed, it takes two. 
Police say when a town big shot discovered his wife's affair, it ended in murder. An eye for an eye on hard copy. Monday at 7 on TV2. Eight thirteen on this Sunday morning. Good morning to you, Gary Coverly, with you, along with Mr. Melvin Epps, mm -hmm. and uh, decent forecast, I guess. Oh yes, I don't think I could have done better on this forecast had I custom designed it. Here, oh, I'll tell you, it's about time. Yeah, guy was trying to play golf yesterday. That ball's <laughs> gone. I mean, that happens to me anyway. But you know, mm. good golfers, the ball's gone all over the place. Too yeah. windy. Well, this is a winner. I'll tell you about it, folks. Okay. You're going to love this one, Detroit. Let's take a look at it outside right now. We have clear skies, temperature 64 degrees, wind coming out of the southwest at 9, relative humidity at 90%, and the barometric pressure is rising slightly. Well, I can tell you this, we have a couple of great days on tap. After that, guess what? We go back into that cycle of being below normal temperature-wise, so summer's going to be here for a couple of days anyway. Take a look at the satellite picture now. You notice a little low cloudiness over the state. Well, we don't have to worry about any rain. Had a little bit of drizzle over the downtown area. It's now moved off, and all of these clouds should burn off by afternoon. Now, to the east, in case you're going into upstate New York someplace, visiting Uncle Wilbur up in Poughkeepsie or something, I can tell you, Uncle take Wilbur. your take your raincoat with you because it's going to be kind of rainy in that part of the country. We've got warm air spreading over us, and it looks like temperatures are going to be close to 90 degrees on on Monday. A little frontal system approaching from the west will likely bring some showers, let's say, into the evening hours. There'll be scattered showers around. Pretty good chance for those showers, in fact. But as we look at it today, you've got it. By the noon hour, we're talking about partly cloudy skies. Sun will be in and out of the clouds today. Then as we look at 5 p.m., we find we'll stay partly cloudy then. And tonight, we'll call it partly cloudy. It's going to hold all the way through this forecast period with a temperature at 1171. Today, look for a high of 86 west to south. Westerly winds will be blowing, and uh, those clouds will be around, but you're going to have a great day to do whatever you have planned outside. And as we take a look now at the burning question, oh, yes. we can tell you that our UV level should be about 84, 85 today. Now, that translates, of course, into for skin type 1, about 25 minutes before severe burn begins. And for skin type 4, it says you can remain out in the sun quite a bit longer. Extended forecast is Monday, those showers late, high temperature 88. Few lingering showers on Tuesday, and then Wednesday and Thursday, guess what? We're back to that strange summer-like weather. Very strange. I hear you. Uncle Wilbur. Well, you know, you're from Uncle Houston. Wilbur. Yeah, yes. you're from Houston. And yes. do you know we're called trolls here? See, we live below the bridge. Okay. Okay, that's what the youpers so. call us. Oh, okay. Now quit your belly aching. Thank you, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Eyewitness Weekend, we have been compiling our list of best Sunday brunch spots in the metro area, and we found that there's a place for everyone. Our first stop is the Beverly Hills Grill. This trendy Birmingham restaurant offers a weekend menu with a health-conscious person in mind. The menu offers a wide range of choices. In addition to the regular selections, each day they offer blackboard specials. The chef has created a menu that will suit your tastes, whether you come in for breakfast or lunch. What we try and do nowadays is people are very conscious of, uh, you know, their health, so we prepare uh, most of our food with olive oil. We've got an egg white omelet special, which is uh, virtually cholesterol-free. Um, our scones are using margarine instead of any kind of whole butters and things like that. Um, instead of doing a corned beef hash, which we will offer on the menu, we'll run a salmon hash uh, on the weekends. It's a lot healthier than corned beef, lower in saturated fat. Breakfast selections include every egg dish imaginable. Fruit-filled pancakes and French toast, just to name a few. Lunch is just as tempting and diverse with choices such as fettuccine with grilled salmon and Creole rock shrimp served with angel hair pasta. But this find is no secret. If you don't wake up early enough on a Sunday morning, you may have a weight on your hands. But the hustle and bustle of this restaurant will keep you entertained and looking forward to your meal. Eyewitness Weekend's next stop was the Whitney in downtown Detroit. Completed in 1894, this building is not only elaborate, but its elegance cannot be matched. Well, what's unique about this restaurant is how beautiful uh, the ambiance is. Uh, when they asked me to revise the menu, I, first thing I thought about was a bed and breakfast uh, restaurant. So I, I created a menu with hearty meals. There are several different rooms used for dining, each one uniquely decorated and furnished with Tiffany stained glass windows. The Sunday brunch is as elegant as the restaurant in which it is served. The prefix, four-course brunch, begins with a selection of muffins, sweet rolls, croissants, and mini bagels. Serving both breakfast and lunch, the next two courses will tempt you with their choices. 
And for dessert, there is the difficult choice between a slice of the Mount Whitney or the most delicious pound cake you've ever seen. In keeping with um, the, the breakfast theme and the dinner theme, we have um, Mount Whitney. It's a white and dark chocolate mousse cake. It's a citrus pound cake with fresh fruit. We have raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and strawberries. This elegant package is made complete with the sounds of classical music flowing throughout the restaurant. And after all of this, if you're not ready to head on home, the gardens surrounding the Whitney are a beautiful place for an afternoon stroll. And according to Melvin, it's going to be a gorgeous day for you uh, to get up out of bed before you go to church or after church or whatever you might be doing. Enjoy a brunch. Now, the cost of the brunch at the Whitney is $10.95 for adults and $6.95 for kids. Also, both restaurants are wheelchair accessible. Next week, Eyewitness Weekend will tempt your taste buds with a visit to the Atrium Restaurant in Southfield and the River Room in downtown Detroit. And if you're looking for something to do today, here are some suggestions. The all-time romantic classic Casablanca. Casablanca, why can't I say it? I love this film. It's celebrating its 50th anniversary this week. The Michigan Theater in Ann Arbor will commemorate the half-century mark with a two-week run of the film. Also, you still have the opportunity to hear the sounds of Harry Connick Jr. talking about great big bands. And that's today at Pine Knob. And if you are staying in this evening, the CBS Sunday night lineup will be at 7 o'clock is 60 minutes, and at 8 is Murder, She Wrote. At 9 is the CBS Sunday movie, Us. And at 11 is TV2's Eyewitness News. And if Sunday's your day to curl up with a good book, here's what most people are reading. Tops on the fiction list again is Gerald's Game, the new book from Stephen King. By the way, I have a couple of these books right here, and I'm going to show them to you. Now, our producer picked out a passage for me to read you from the Stephen King book. I, I, I like some Stephen King books, but not all of them. But anyway, here's the passage he picked out. Jeff, we're going to blame this on you. Jeff Lark. Jesse thinks, <clears throat> this isn't like dreaming, it's like drowning. Everyone I've ever known seems to be standing here under this weird starlit afternoon sky, watching my naked husband, watching my naked husband try to put me in handcuffs while Marvin Gaye sings, can I get a witness? Sorry about that. Uh, if there's any comfort to be had, it's this. Things can't possibly get worse. Of course, they do get worse. And that's this one. And that's the Stephen King, okay? Now, uh, after that, by the way, are Waiting to Exhale from Terry McMillan, The Pelican Brief by John Grisham, Alice Walker's Possessing the Secret of Joy, and Anne Rivers' Siddham's Colony. Uh, Andrew Morton's unauthorized biography of Princess Diane leads the nonfiction list, again with Gail Sheehy's book, The Silent Passage Second, followed by David McCullough's Truman, A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, and the new book by Miriam Wright Edelman, Late of the Children's Defense Fund. Uh, by the way, we have Diane's book here, too. I just wanted to show you that. Do we go on three? By the way, Borders Books of Southfield was kind enough to loan us these books, and we thank them for that. Uh, I have good news and bad news. We really enjoyed the books, Borders, uh, but uh, Jeff took these home with him last night, and uh, I don't know if some of these stains will come out or not. I think it's peanut butter. I never seen anything like it. Let's check some late scores from the ballparks in the American League. The White Sox beat the Angels 8-2, to and Texas sunk the Mariners 7-3. to While over in the National League, the Astros fell to the Padres 7-5. to Now TV2's Fred Heumann has more from the world of sports. Thanks, Gary, and good morning. The Detroit Lions opened the preseason campaign last night with a 17-7 loss to the Houston Oilers at the Pontiac Silverdome. Here's the only Lion touchdown of the night. Cody Carlson's pass bobbled, picked off in midair by Harry Colon. He races 32 yards for the touchdown and a 7-0 Lion lead in the second quarter. Oilers led 10-7 in the fourth when Mike Elkins finds Gary Wellman for a two-yard TD pass that made it 17-7. That was the final in front of 41,000 at the Dome. The Tigers play the Blue Jays this afternoon at Tiger Stadium. It will round out their four-game series in Detroit. Last night, the Tigers beat the Jays 8-6, a milestone night for Lou Whitaker. He crashed his 200th career home run. He's also played 2,000 Major League games and has 2,000 RBIs. He and Joe Morgan, the Hall of Famer, the only second baseman in baseball history to be in that elite club, 8-6, the final from the stadium. Well, the Summer Olympic Games conclude today in Barcelona. Yesterday, the United States Olympic basketball team won the gold medal with a 117-85 victory over Croatia. Michael Jordan with 22 points to lead the Dream Team, which went 8-0 at the Olympics and won by an average margin of 43 points. The men's 400-meter relay team featuring Leroy Burrell and Carl Lewis also won the gold for the U.S., setting a world record in the process. Well, a great story of courage in Royal Oak this summer. Joe Scheid making like Major Leaguer Jim Abbott and playing with one arm. Who knows? Maybe one day he'll follow Abbott 
all the way to the big leagues. The recollections of Joe Scheid's sledding accident more than five years ago are not pleasant. My brother tried to stop me, and he accidentally flipped me over, and I went flying into it. Into what? A snowblower. Initially, Don Shy didn't realize the severity of his son's injury. Actually, not until we got in the car when I couldn't find his arm. And we actually had to call and, and, and have the, somebody go out and pick up his arm out of a snowbank and bring it up to the hospital. Not only had Joe lost his left arm, but he broke his right arm, severely cut his shoulder blade, suffered ear and neck injuries, and came a fraction of an inch from being decapitated by the snowblower he fell into. But the sadness of Joe Scheid's story ends there. Five years later, this is one happy young man with ambition, ability, and a will to succeed that is frankly quite remarkable. He can do what he sets his mind to do and do things that I can't do with two hands that he can do with one. In fact, aside from playing for Dairy Queen in the Royal Oak Baseball Federation, Joe swims, plays soccer and basketball, and plans to give football a try this fall. Did anyone tell you, gee, you can't play with one arm? Sometimes. He goes, how come that kid's playing with one arm and stuff like that? How'd you handle that? Do you remember? I just played. They didn't care. And I played and I proved them wrong. Number 16, Joe Shine. There's nothing stopping him. He won't, I mean, he's a daredevil from <laughs> get go. Two months after his, his operation, or after everything was taken out and pins and everything else, uh, he was out playing soccer. You can call Joe Scheid a lot of things. Call him special, call him unique, call him remarkable. Just make sure you never call him handicapped. I don't consider him handicapped. I consider him inconvenienced. He's met Sparky Anderson and Jim Abbott, the one-armed pitcher from Flint who plays for the California Angels. But Joe Scheid deserves an identity all his own. He is one special young man. Do you sometimes get special attention because of the one arm? Yeah, sometimes. It bothers you, doesn't it? Yeah. How come? It's not fair to other people. That young man isn't enough to start your week on a positive note. I don't know what is. Gary, back to you. Fred, thank you very much. That's a great story. I uh, had the occasion to interview several years ago Jim Abbott and his family. Wonderful people. What a great kid, by the way. Uh, a quick note here on the computer this morning. Uh, this is a historic thing to remember. In 1936, Jesse Owens won his fourth gold medal at the Berlin Olympics as the United States took first place in the 400-meter relay. There's a man with courage. And very quickly... Uh, congratulations to the Dream Team, but you ought to read Talbert this morning. He has his winners and losers, and uh, just one of his many loser picks is the Dream Team off the court. Boy, do I agree with that. It is 8.26 in the morning, 64 degrees outside. Coming up next on TV2 Eyewitness Weekend, two of the cutest dogs you'll ever see are looking for a home today. We'll tell you how you can help. And later, being a father to your child is harder than a lot of people think. In our focus segment, we'll find out how some community leaders are trying to make that process easier. I'm Cecil Fielder here, swinging in action for the Ronald McDonald Children's Charity Hole-in-One Shootout. Join us August 14th through the 22nd at Country Club Village of Northville. Goodbye, golf ball. It's your chance to win great prizes like a 1992 Mercury Capri, a $200,000 Pulte home, or just maybe $1 million. So give it your best shot and swing into action. Call 420-0144 for rules and details. On the next Stone Rivers, check out some amazing real-life stories, like this woman who fell 12,000 feet from an airplane and survived. And don't miss some really weird stuff from Ripley's Believe It or Not, like shrunken heads, chastity belts. Well, he's really got to love you a lot. A Mona Lisa made out of toast and John Wayne made out of lint? The Duke is lint. That's going to come out of Delta Brooks' belly button. Yeah, that's I mean. It's an amazing Joan Rivers. Monday morning at 9 on TV2. How does it feel to go from rags to riches? You ended up with the six kids and no money. I had been making chili. What was the next step? I turned it into a business. And your business was making fiber foods? I uh, thought out a biochemist that could create a product for my child. Now grosses $50 million annual sales. And she laughs. <laughs> All the way to the bank. Rags to riches on Christina. Monday morning at 10 on TV2.
Another candidate that could make our Geek of the, Le uh, Geek of the Week list. Joining us today is Mike Killian from the Michigan Anti-Cruelty Society. He has brought with him two adult dogs that will challenge any puppy in the cute department. Good morning, Gary. Most every week, I'll bring in a kitten or a puppy that we're offering for adoption at the Michigan Anti-Cruelty Society. Oftentimes, we forget about the older dogs and cats that are at our shelter. Today, I brought with me a couple of real good-looking terrier mixes, kind of bingy-looking dogs. This is Teddy here on my right and Buck here on my left. Both of them are about 18 months old. They're ready for adoption, real healthy, seem to love children, and obviously get along with other pets. If anybody's interested in these or any of the other pets we have at our shelter, please contact the Michigan Anti-Cruelty Society at 891-7188. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. They are cute. It's 64 degrees right now. The time is 8.29 on this Sunday morning when TV2's Eyewitness Weekend returns. We'll update the top stories this Sunday morning, and we'll tell you if you'll have to wait to have that new phone installed. And an historic building in Metro Detroit is at the center of a heated debate. We'll tell you what the fuss over Dun Scotus is all about in this week's cover story. The Ford Factory Authorized Clearance is here. Get a thousand back on 92 Ford Taurus. Plus, save up to 700 with option package discounts. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Don't miss this once a year opportunity for big savings on all 92 model cars and trucks. The time is now to buy a new Ford during the Factory Authorized Clearance. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. For a Ford. I'm Sherry Margolis. Hurdle one of life's obstacles, cystic fibrosis, along with TV2 and WWJ in Metro Detroit's largest corporate battle, the Sports Challenge. Over 600 professionals from all kinds of metro area businesses will compete in this mini Olympic-style event Saturday, September 12th at U of M Dearborn. Remember, this is your opportunity to join the fight against cystic fibrosis, the number one genetic killer of children. Call 354-6565 today to register. Good morning, I'm Gary Coverly. Welcome back to TV2's Eyewitness Weekend. It's 64 degrees right now at 8.32 in the morning, and Melbourne Epps will have weather details in a few moments. But first, let's take a look at some of the stories we're following this Sunday morning. Two Marines are dead today after an accident during training exercises in the Middle East. The military says the two-man crew of a Cobra helicopter died after the chopper went down eight miles south of the Kuwaiti-Iraqi border. It's still not clear how the crash happened. The helicopter was reportedly unarmed and on a routine training flight when the accident happened. Meantime, the U.N. weapons inspection team in Iraq is looking through a government facility today. The on-site inspection was delayed for one day because of an Iraqi holiday marking the end to the 1988 war with Iran. The site of the inspection was kept a secret until the very last minute to prevent the Iraqi government from moving any materials that are prohibited. Many citizens of what used to be Yugoslavia say they're disappointed by an announcement from President Bush. The president told reporters that he might support limited force to protect U.N. humanitarian flights into Bosnia, but he will not send U.S. troops to help end the war in that country. Bush says the situation in the Republic is complex and there are no easy solutions. The Bill Clinton bus tour has been winning rave reviews, and today it appears to be headed for Michigan. The people who do the scheduling for the Democratic presidential nominee say the Clinton-Gore bus caravan will start its third leg August 21st in Detroit. It'll be the first trip to Michigan for Clinton since he won his party's presidential nomination last month.
And Michigan Bell workers have elected to stay on the job while their union leadership keeps working on a settlement. Negotiators will be back at the bargaining table today as talks continue on a contract for 12,000 Bell employees. The union had threatened to strike at midnight last night, but agreed to stay on the job while those talks continue. Right now, let's take a break from the news of the day and get some advice for real-world problems that you may be facing today. Our motivational expert, Jim Tooman, says one of the best ways to ensure success in the coming week and beyond is to take a moment to set goals today. 25 years ago, I got a wonderful opportunity to live in a village in Africa for almost two months. And it gave me a true perspective of people who were at peace and who had found some real sense of happiness, similar to the movie The Gods Must Be Crazy. And I learned, interestingly enough, by coincidence, in this primitive village, I learned the technique of goal setting. These people had, had been able to perfect this by writing on little tablets once a week their seven-day goals that included how much food they needed on the table, and how much time they were going to spend with their families, and what they needed to do in terms of their health. And I, what I discovered was the sense of balance that they had achieved in their lives, the true sense of happiness. And I took this goal-setting technique back, and I started teaching it to people. And I started getting in tune with what the concept of balance was in our lives, that it's not just that we're we're working all the time and we have a fulfilling career because so many of us are workaholics. We work 10, 12, 14 hour days. What happens one day when our jobs are gone? Does that mean our life is gone? No, not if we have balance. Not if we have balance. Every 30 days I sit down and I write on three by five cards. I pick the five key areas of my life. Career, material, health, family, and the number one goal for me is how do I want to be remembered by people in my life who I love and who love me. And I write them on three by five cards and I put them on my clock radio in the morning so that when my alarm goes off, I see those three by five cards and I see those goals and it reminds me and jogs my head what I need to do to fulfill those goals. The key is the balance. So remember those five areas career, health, family, material things, and how do you want to be remembered by people in your life who you love and who love you? And that's the key to peace and happiness. Thank you, Jim. See, we try to be inspirational here on this Sunday morning, give you a little inspiration. It's 64 degrees outside the time right now, 836, still to come on TV2's Eye. This weekend, we've got some solutions for you. If you're looking for a new job, TV2's Job Hunt is next.